What's up everyone, it's me Pratima. So it's that time of the year again where I compare all of the flagship mobile processors which means I have the new Snapdragon 8 Elite from Qualcomm, the Diamond City 9400 from MediaTek and the A18 Pro from Apple. So let's find out which one's the best this year. This time there is some insane stuff to look forward to that I promise you and I have never seen before, especially from Qualcomm. Because after more than a decade, Qualcomm is finally back to making custom CPU cores. It's called Orion and it has a 2 plus 6 CPU cluster with 2 high performance and 6 mid performance cores. And Qualcomm claims it's 45% faster than last year's 8 Gen 3 both in terms of single and multi-core performance, that too while using 44% less power. Whereas its Adreno GPU and custom Hexagon NPU also boast massive performance and efficiency improvements over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. As for MediaTek, they didn't design its own custom CPU core, although they claim 35% better single core and 28% better sustained multi-core performance while sipping 40% less power. Here, MediaTek has only used one new core design this time, the Cortex-X925, and kept the rest of the CPU cluster the same as last year. But you do get ARM's brand new GPU design, the Immortalis G925, and like the Snapdragon 8 Elite, this one has similar performance uplifts as well, with 41% better peak performance and 40% better ray tracing at 44% less power draw. The A18 Pro from Apple also promises some serious improvements across the board, including a 15% faster CPU, a 20% faster GPU, 2 times faster hardware accelerated ray tracing, and 17% memory bandwidth over the A17 Pro. The reason all these chips are promising such dramatic upgrades this year is because of two things. Number one, all of these chips now use TSMC's second gen 3NM node. And number two, they are based on ARM V9 architecture, which apparently helps with machine learning and generative AI performance more than anything else. All right, with that out of the way, let's do some real world tests to know the actual truth. So for this, I'm using these three phones, the Realme GT7 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Elite, the Vivo X200 Pro with the Diamond City 9400, and the iPhone 16 Pro Max with the A18 Pro chip. I've also enabled the best performance mode on all of these three phones so that we are getting the absolute best result possible. Now, before moving on to a head-on battle between these three, I first wanted to find out if all of those official performance claims had any substance at all. I mean, 30 to 40% better performance on average with equally better power efficiency? Well, it seems too good to be true, right? But it turns out neither Qualcomm, MediaTek or Apple were inflating the performance numbers by all that much. The Snapdragon 8 Elite managed roughly 35% better single and multi-core results in Geekbench 6's uh, CPU test versus 45% improvement claimed promise over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The A18 Pro actually over-delivered on its performance numbers while the Diamond City 9400 under-delivered by some margin. As for the GPU, it turns out Apple was once again under-promising and over-delivering with the A18 Pro. The Diamond City 9400 did not quite meet MediaTek's claims yet again, but neither did the Snapdragon 8 Elite this time. So yeah, not a good start for the Android world. Nevertheless, let's compare these guys one on one, starting with everyone's favorite benchmark, Antutu. I know this is a super popular benchmarking app, but what you need to know about Antutu is that it's not a cross-platform tool at all, meaning you can't compare its score between Android and iOS devices even if you're running the same version of the app. Anyway, I ran Antutu on all three of them just to see where the Snapdragon 8 Elite and the Diamond City 9400 stand. And like always, it turns out Qualcomm is still the king of Antutu with a narrow 3.8% lead over MediaTek. To see how much performance these two chips lose over time, I ran Antutu nine more times in a row and the 8 Elite impressed me once again, losing just 8.7% of its performance at the end versus how the Diamond City 9400 lost more than 14% of its peak performance. That reminds me, before I began testing these chips, I was pretty nervous about the Snapdragon 8 Elite's thermal since early reports suggested that Qualcomm's latest chip runs quite hot. And yes, my unit of the Realme GT7 Pro easily ran the hottest of the three, finishing at a flaming hot 48.8 degrees Celsius, while Vivo X200 Pro and the iPhone 16 Pro Max were much cooler to touch. Maybe other phones with Snapdragon 8 Elite might do better. We'll, we'll have to see about that. 
Okay, the next benchmark on my queue is Geekbench 6, which unlike Anto 2 is indeed a cross-platform benchmarking tool, meaning no matter what system you're running it on, its score is comparable with everything else. Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, doesn't matter. And as far as Geekbench 6's CPU benchmark is concerned, iPhones have pretty much been an undisputed champion for like ever, both in single core and multi-core tests. But I am happy to see things are actually turning around now. So first things first, the Snapdragon 8 Elite straight up beat the A18 Pro in terms of multi-core workloads by nearly 6%. Whereas even in the single core test, I found that Qualcomm has managed to really close the gap on Apple this year. The A18 Pro still enjoys a comfortable 17-29% to lead over Snapdragon 8 Elite and the Diamond City 9400. But let me remind you that Apple used to be ahead of both of them by roughly 30% before. And even if you look at the power efficiency, the Snapdragon 8 Elite and the A18 Pro are very evenly matched, while the Diamond City 9400 finishes last one more time. Okay, let's now check how the AI capabilities of these chips are. For this, I am using the Geekbench AI because this thing measures the real-world performance of AI systems in terms of both speed and accuracy, and it also supports different on-device AI frameworks as well, including Android's TensorFlow Lite and Apple's Core ML. And just look at the result. I honestly was not expecting the A18 Pro to absolutely annihilate the other two here, be it when I ran the test on CPU, the GPU, or the MPU. The Snapdragon 8 Elite actually posted some bizarrely low numbers with its NPU, lower than what I've seen from the 8 Gen 3, so I feel like the GT7 Pro still needs a couple of updates if Qualcomm's claim of that 45% faster NPU is ever going to hold true. Okay, so far I know everything has been Apple this, Snapdragon that, but when it comes to the GPU, the graphics, the Diamond City 9400 ran away with the gold medal in all of my tests. Take 3 Mark Steel Nomad Lite Stress Test for example, it's a fairly resource-hungry graphics benchmark that renders a non-ray trace game environment at 1440p resolution 20 times in a row. And under this, MediaTek's latest flagship chip edged out the 8 Elite with the thinnest of margins while the A18 Pro ranked last. It's the same story with Wildlife Extreme Stress Test as well, which mirrors modern mobile game environments at 4K resolution. Whereas even in 3 Mark's solar-based stress test, Test, which is a ray trace graphics benchmark, the Diamond City 9400 had the best score out of the three, followed by Qualcomm and then Apple. So yeah, the Diamond City 9400 with the Immortalis GPU is near unbeatable this year, not just with pure raw performance, but also with its excellent energy efficiency. The only problem with the Diamond City 9400 is that it has the worst stability score in every single one of those benchmarks. So despite everything that I just talked about, that level of performance throttling is definitely something that you need to keep an eye on. Moving on, the final synthetic benchmark that I ran on all three phones is the Speedometer 3.0. It basically measures the responsiveness of web applications on a browser. And just like Geekbench, no Android phone has ever come close to iPhone's performance year and this year too the A18 Pro has a towering 95% lead over the Snapdragon 8 Elite and an even more ruthless 103% lead versus the Diamond City 9400. Alright, so apart from benchmarks, let's test these three chips in a bunch of productivity applications and here exporting a 4K video to 1080p after applying a simple color preset on Adobe Rush, the Apple A18 Pro finishes the task 56% faster than the Snapdragon 8 Elite and 50% faster than the Diamond City 9400. For the Lightroom test, I imported 100 raw photos and applied a preset to see who does it the fastest and here are the results. Surprisingly, the Diamond City 9400 finished it in less than 6 seconds, the Snapdragon 8 Elite took a little under 8 seconds, while the iPhone 16 Pro Max took over 25 seconds for the same job. And it was just about the same in my video export test on CapCut as well, with the Diamond City 9400 finishing first, followed by the Snapdragon 8 Elite and Apple's A18 Pro. Finally, let's talk about real-world gaming and one thing I'll tell you straight away is that all of these three phones are perfectly capable of playing all sorts of games with the best graphics fidelity and the highest settings you could possibly find. 
The Snapdragon 8 Elite did end up posting the highest average FPS and better 1% low FPS numbers in pretty much all of the games I tried. Although this was such a tight race that you will be impressed by the other two as well. Be it when I played PUBG at 120 FPS, War Thunder with ray tracing enabled or Genshin Impact at the highest graphics and 60 FPS. As far as efficiency is concerned, these three are pretty neck and neck. So yeah, this is by far the most exciting year for mobile gaming because all of these three chips are so damn good. Okay, so let's wrap up things now and if I were to prepare a report card of sorts to summarize how Apple, Qualcomm and MediaTek did in all of my tests, it would look something like this. The Apple A18 Pro won the single core CPU test on Geekbench as always alongside all the AI benchmarks, browser responsiveness and in my video export test on Adobe Rush as well. Whereas the Snapdragon 8 Elite had a clean sweep in literally all of the real world gaming tests and it also beat Apple for the first time ever in terms of multi-core CPU performance. On the other hand, the Diamond City 9400 came victorious in all of the gaming benchmarks and also a couple of real life tests. So overall, this year's flagship chipsets, all of them are so damn competitive, both performance and efficiency wise. So I think declaring one as the clear winner would be a grave, grave mistake. Apple's A18 Pro actually feels like a pro chip this year. Qualcomm's custom Orion CPU cores on the Snapdragon 8 Elite are as impressive as I had hoped, while the Diamond City 9400 has a lot of positives as well, especially with its GPU, which means no matter what chip your next flagship phone is powered by, it's going to be amazing. Trust me. So everybody, that was my full detailed comparison of all of the flagship chipsets that you can find in the market right now. Which do you think impressed you the most? Do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.